The South African National Treasury has allocated more than 265 million rand over the period and medium term in efforts to get South Africa off the international grey list. This follows the Financial Action Task Force adding South Africa to its list of countries that must be monitored to ensure that anti-money laundering and terrorism funding regulations are followed. The Paris-based anti-money laundering watchdog greylisted the country in February this year for falling short of certain international standards for the combating of money laundering and other serious financial crimes. Presenting his ministry's budget proposal in Parliament, Finance Minister Ino Gonongwane stated that the country's financial intelligence centre had budgeted this money, which is in tune of millions, as part of the response measures needed. Now, although the, AF, uh, the FATF acknowledged that South Africa had made significant progress in addressing the deficiencies identified in the mutual evaluation report published in October 2021, eight areas of strategic deficiency in the country's anti-money laundering and countering the finances of tourism laws were identified. So this morning, Albert Van Zau, Manager, Unit for Corruption and Integrity Studies, Northwest University Business School, in purchase from uh, South Africa, is joining us this morning to look at the issue and how South Africa will be able to deal with this. Thank you so much, Albert, for joining us. Thank you so much. It's a privilege being with you. So looking at the details that we have, uh, FATF highlighted eight strategic um, areas in terms of deficient law gaps that South Africa will need to meet before January 2025. Now, that will help the country get off the gray list that it has been added to. But then we're looking at how South Africa will be able to meet those criteria. I'd like you to touch on these eight areas that were highlighted by FATF. And how far do you, uh, you think that South Africa has gone in addressing these areas? So in broad terms, there are eight areas that uh, we need to attend to. Um, we have up until uh, January 2025 to uh, uh, reach them. Uh, it ranges from the issue of um, enhanced cooperation with international uh, 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 entities, other countries, to uh, uh, enhance our measures and cooperation in terms of money laundering and terrorist financing, to share information and so forth. Internally, we have to step up in terms of issues like beneficial ownerships of NGOs, of uh, trusts, of um, uh, companies. Um, then in terms of our um, financial intelligence center, we have to do more efforts in terms of ensuring that we follow up on the intelligence received by the FIC, the process that flows from there to the uh, police and uh, specifically to, to get more um, um, prosecutions. That is particularly where our vulnerabilities lie. Um, things like ensuring that we have more state forensic capacity available. Then the issue of of designated non-financial businesses and professions. There is also a, a lot of work to do. And this money that this budget refers to will specifically address that issue to ensure that we have this uh, risk-based approach at entities like uh, um, lawyers, um, like uh, estate agents, to ensure that we are able to monitor them properly as is required. Out, um, the fact that when it comes to monitoring uh, monies and how it flows within the South African financial system, there's been a bit of deficiency in, and, and that's causing the gap. So I'd like to wind back a bit and find out why is it hard for a money flows or monetary um, movements, as it were, to be monitored, to know the endpoints uh, from point A to point B in and out of South Africa's financial system? Does it have to do with sheer negligence on the part of government regulatory agencies, or it has to do with um, bureaucratic bottlenecks, or you just attribute it to um, overall systemic failure? 
So I, I hope I, I heard you correctly. Remember, the fact is we have a very vibrant financial system um, in terms of the, the whole sub covenant. Uh, they, we have a very good financial system, but unfortunately, it means that there's a lot of money that flows through the country from good and bad sources. Um, the issue is we have a, a, a very big border. The, the, there's a lot of cash transactions that is difficult uh, everywhere in the world to, to manage and to monitor the issue of cryptocurrency is also a new challenge that we need to deal with but especially the this issue of beneficial ownership the question is how do we determine who's actually sitting behind a company or a trust um, that is something that's difficult to manage not only in south africa but throughout the world and it requires a lot of administrative uh, efforts, um, systems that needs to be in place, and of course, it costs a lot of money. And uh, as a developing country, that are that are specific challenges that we uh, have to deal with. Two hundred and sixty-five million rand, uh, according to some people, there's a lot of money. Some people say it's inadequate, but then let's just look at what has been made available. Now, do you think this fund uh, would be able to accelerate the, the listing process? And how do you think it will help in putting in place the needed measures that will help the country um, deal with issues of money laundering and um, terrorism financing? Oh, so what I can say about that um, uh, allocation, uh, remember this is only one part of what has already been done. Uh, the National Prosecuting Authority has received increased budgeting in previous years. Um, the police, specifically the Director for Priority Crime Investigations, the Hawks as we know them, they've also received uh, extra uh, budgets uh, in previous years. So this year is, is the first time that uh, uh, specific additional budgeting is provided to the Financial Intelligence Center, which is a good thing. Um, we must keep in mind that this is uh, for uh, not only for this year, it has to be spent over three financial years, so it's actually a bit less. Um, I, I do believe um, it is a good sign that government invests this, this but um, coming from my background as an investigator, uh, uh, I would always say that the more money in, is will all, and capacity is always needed in in uh, ensuring that we have proper law enforcement and prosecutions in in a country. All right. So um, according to the Minister of Finance, uh, Enoch, he said that the National Treasury will be leading the onslaught against money laundering, um, tourism financing, which are two major issues that uh, is actually affecting the South African image and economy adversely. Now, do you think that um, the National Treasury has the capacity to get the job done? And also the judiciary, the judicial system, do you think it also has the metal to ensure that uh, those who are found culpable of these offenses, the saboteurs, uh, as the case may be, will be brought to book. And do you think those processes will be expedited? Because we're looking at 2024 as a deadline. Yeah. So, yeah, remember, m money laundering and terrorist financing are complex offenses. It's difficult to, to uh, uncover it. It's more difficult to, to prosecute it. Um, different uh, often it is managed, or these uh, it uh, is managed by drug cartels or terrorist groups who have access to a lot of money, a lot of experts. Um, the approach to those offences are are. Or, or they should therefore be holistically driven. It's not only the responsibility of Treasury, they won't manage it on their own. It's not only a police problem. It is uh, 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 the answer to this lies within the broad society, from making use of proper whistleblowers, from having uh, uh, proper banking systems, by uh, involving, uh, as I said, the professions, the lawyers, the uh, auditors, who may be seen to facilitating these this kind of of activities all of them needs to work uh, together and and that is what uh, we are seeing in the country we uh, want to get off this uh, gray list it's not a good thing for our country um, but but uh, for for the whole continent it is um, to we have to install better confidence 
in our countries, in our economies, and only through that we'll get enhanced um, um, uh, uh, capital inflows and uh, infrastructure development. Um, but that depends on how you are seeing the perception, and uh, and it is a bad thing for all of us to be seen that there is corruption in a country or that you are a haven for terrorists or money launderers. All right. So uh, finally, Albert, um, I'd like to find out from you how optimistic are you that South Africa will be able to get off um, the FT, uh, FATF grey list? And I'd like to also know if um, the country is not able to meet the deadline, what are the implications for the country's uh, business environment and, um, of course, the banks and the country's economy? Well, so... <sighs> In the event that we do not meet it, um, uh, which I believe will not happen, um, then you move into uh, uh, another another category. Um, there are two or three countries in the world who's from that category, and that is a, a blacklist. Um, that is certainly not the country uh, position where you want to be. Then you will have real sanctions imposed on you uh, and disinvestment. Um, I believe that uh, from uh, what we see specifically from a business community, from the banking uh, 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 world, uh, professional bodies, all of them uh, are concerned about this. They are prepared to work together to, to cooperate with government. There's, uh, I've been involved with a number of initiatives where we are willing to share information to assist uh, the police, to capacitate them. Um, um, I, we hope and we believe that uh, government has also that that commitment um i think this budget that has been allocated is 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 a proof of the fact that they are committed to to this and and we trust that we will get off that list uh, as soon as is possible well of course um about for a country that is dealing with the issues of energy crisis a fluctuating economy and of course some other attendant issues uh, you would want to ensure or make sure that you do not get into the blacklist because that would be worse than what's things now but we hope that um, the south african government will be able to expend that money in the right places to build the firewalls and fabrics that will help um, deal with um, institutional problems and short dealings um, in that sector so that it can get off the list thank you so much albert for joining us very much it was an honor